How's it going, Blitzers? This is just kind of an off-the-cuff type of um, live stream. Just giving you some updates as far as how things are going, things that are happening with the channel, uh, things that are happening with the giveaway. Uh, so that's going to be some of the things that we're going to have for that. Well, so we'll see who comes on, if there will be anybody on the live stream. Uh, so I'm doing this my cell phone signal, so we'll see how that works as well. And then we'll see how all this goes. But we'll give it a little bit, see how it goes with everything, and kind of see where it is. But there's kind of my basic setup uh, for how the... Um, how my recording places. Uh, so basically, inexpensive table, inexpensive lights. I have two lights up there from Walmart. They're like, I think like eight dollars, and then just some lighting. So four people on. Oh, awesome. So uh, so we're gonna be going over some of the things that are happening with the channel. So leave any comments down below, and then I'll answer them as we go as well, and then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, but uh, these are gonna be ones that we're gonna have. Uh, for uh, the giveaways. Uh, so this is a total of $1,225 uh, worth of knives uh, from Drop or Mass Drop as they were known uh, now Drop. Uh, so these are all the ones that are going to be going for that giveaway. So make a donation to either St. Jude's or over to the Wounded Warriors Project and that's going to be where you're going to have your entry into getting uh, one of these knives. So we're going to have that one, the Orca, uh, we have the dog tooth. Keen, Dow, and CTF, as well as the Thresher. So those are all the ones that we're going to have for the giveaway. Uh, so that's all you got to do is just donate to one of those groups. And these are all the knives that are going to go out to folks. There will be no charge for that. Uh, Continental United States uh, for the giveaway prizes. And that's going to be how uh, that's going to go uh, for all of these. But yeah, that's $1,200 in knives. Totally free, just for donating. But uh, that's going to be how that's going to function uh, for that. Uh, but also we're going to have the regular giveaway. So once we hit to 2000 uh, for this channel specifically, uh, then we'll have the giveaway for that. So we had a few people, uh, companies contribute to that so far. Uh, so KPL is going to be uh, sent in uh, some combo pack. So we see the regular KPL and KPL heavy. And then we also have NanoLube. Uh, they sent in their pack, uh, so it's going to be the same type of setup. So it's going to be about the 10 and then also the 85. Uh, that's about the same weight as the KPL. So you're going to get both of those. Uh, there's going to be three prize packs for that. And then this is one of the things here. Uh, so from Popov Leather. Uh, so you can also use uh, coupon code to get 15% off from Popov Leather. Uh, so just use Bladester as, um, for the checkout. And so there's going to be one uh, that they sent in. Uh, so I currently use this uh, on a regular basis. Uh, so this is one that I have here. What's up? I love knives. Awesome. Uh, so this is one that I actually use. So this, this is something I use daily. So this is like an EDC item that I have on me every single day. Uh, and then this is how it's wearing. Uh, so this is how it comes new. Okay, it's a little bit different color for this one, but this is going to be one that's going to be in the prize pack. I put in the little uh, pocket pen. So I'll probably order some pocket pens as well. I uh, have that in the prize pack because I do like those pens. They're inexpensive. They do really well. And then there's going to be... Uh, so they were going to send some over, uh, but I haven't heard from them in a while. So I'll probably just order them myself and then see where that goes for those pocket pens because it really works well uh, for this type of slip for the, ED, the pocket shield. So that's going to be from pop Up Leather. So that's one of the prize packs. There's a sticker in there as well. And then we have Hogue actually donated a knife too. So this is going to be uh, the one from them, the EX03. So this is going to be one of the giveaway prizes uh, for the once we hit 2000 on this channel. Uh, right now I think we're at about 18, 18 something. I'll have to check that again. So this is going to be the knife that's going to be given away. So that's going to be brand new, um, not used or anything like that. So seven people on, thank you very much. And also if you have any comments, then leave them down below as well. Uh, but did go through as far as the other knives uh, for the mass drop giveaway for the charitable giveaway. So just donate to one of those groups, email it over to bladebenter at hotmail.com, specific email set up for that. And then that's gonna be how that's gonna work. And it's $1,200 in knives. Uh, so hopefully we can get to the actual amount for the value on the knives, but if we don't, then that's how it goes. It's still going to go out, so continental, continental United States uh, for those. But this is going to be one of the giveaways for the Hogue. And then we'll probably throw in some other ones as well. Uh, so still kind of putting that together. So uh, there. And then I don't know what else I have for that. 
But those are going to be giveaways uh, that are going to be happening uh, within the channel. So, yeah. oh, there's some more comments. EDC are done. It's been a while since I've seen you on. So I don't know how much of a lag this has either. Uh, but also, what's up, Patrick? Also, Omega. But these are the ones that are going to have uh, for the giveaway uh, for it. Not this one. That's mine. Uh, but it is very good. I actually do have the Kershaw Pub. That's what I actually carry in there. I did have a Swiss Army knife in there before, uh, but I decided to just go with the pub instead. Uh, so it's imprinted in there. But that's something I use regularly for that. Uh, one thing that, um, if anybody likes uh, a fixed blade, uh, the one that I got in uh, from uh, QSP and actually through MesserDepot.de uh, actually did work out really well. So that's actually this one. And I'm actually going to order the Kydex sheet. Uh, what's up? Women carry knives. Welcome to the, uh, the live stream here. So I'm actually going to order the Kydex sheet for this. Uh, so this is the way it comes uh, basically from the factory. It's going to be with this leather sheath. Uh, but I am going to order the Kydex one. Uh, it's about $40 uh, through MesserDepot.de. So that is the designer uh, of the, uh, the knife itself. Uh, so that's kind of where that comes from as far as uh, what is happening with that. But that's going to be a pretty cool one uh, that's coming out. I uh, have a few other knives that are in the, the pass round that will be coming through the channel as well. Uh, but that's about all that's going on with that. Uh, we have a few different things up here. So I went through some of the, uh, the, the analytics as far as what's the most popular knives. So surprisingly, the knife that I had the most views on uh, was actually the Minimalist, which is actually this one here. I do like it quite a bit as far as the knife. Uh, and then uh, the actual one from the Fultz, um, the actual uh, custom uh, minimalist, that one goes for about 220 I did see it come up on the market. It goes really quick though. Uh, so if you actually do see the actual uh, the actual custom minimalist, it actually comes up uh, fairly quick and then sells out really quick as well uh, for those. But those go for about 220 for the actual custom one. Uh, this one's not the regular minimalist anything from like, 15 to 29 dollars or something like that uh, for that blade so but that's about all that we have for those and so those are the two updates uh, for that for the channel as far as where we're going to be going uh, with that uh, so some of the things that I carry uh, even the setup the setup actually seems to be working pretty well what's up Jade and then also, it's kind of working well, because before I used to actually do this on my dining room table, as that's how I used to set it up. I still have a tripod uh, down here, as far as what I'm using to hold the camera. I'm probably gonna get another one that's actually gonna come out from the back of the table and actually go over, which is probably gonna be a better way uh, for that to work, uh, as far as actually being able to hold the camera. Because I still use um, my regular phone, uh, so this is actually the same model. So I just use this phone, there's like, flagship of 2017 or something. Uh, so this is actually the uh, LG V20. So that's actually the phone I use. It's actually one of the ones that you can actually replace the battery on. Uh, so I think that's kind of well and gone as far as something that's available. Uh, but that's the one I actually use uh, when I record. I don't have anything that's up to date. Don't have an iPhone. Uh, so really you can record with anything as far as if you're getting started kind of where you want to go with things as well. Uh, so I also do have the response that I'm working on for the thousand dollars, basically five knives for a thousand dollars, but it has to be more than nine hundred dollars. So I'm kind of getting that sort situated. Uh, this one probably will drop off of there. Uh, so thank you to all the folks that were in the Apex Pastoring group. Uh, so there's actually the knife that they uh, gifted uh, to me. Uh, so this is, of course, the Chris Reeves uh, large Sobenza 21 with the in single blade and this is actually the one that was gifted over to me uh, for kind of running the pass around group as far as getting that thing going so I do appreciate uh, very much uh, this knife I don't think I would have picked it up uh, normally but that's probably going to drop off from the 550 because it kind of just takes a lot of real estate for the dollar amount and then I'm going to have to kind of piecemeal things in uh, so I'll kind of see how that goes but uh, that will probably be one that will be dropping off uh, from that whole um, the whole pass around for that one. Uh, so these are the ones here. So we'll kind of go around the table. I have uh, three of the Blade HQ uh, knife rolls that I use uh, for most of my storage. 
Now, so that's one of these things. Oh, so that's what I use normally as far as the, the Blade HQ knife roll uh, for what I use for majority of my storage. And then there, I do have like some little Ziploc bags, <laughs> mines that, that don't really mean a lot. Uh, but this is kind of where that goes. Then the original one that they had uh, went all the way down clear. Um, and then this one, they actually added uh, the canvas. I think they're still out of stock on these, but they're like $15, I think, normally uh, for their pricing. So it's actually a really good deal for that. If anybody has any suggestions on different ones, I know there's a Spidey pack. Uh, that's another way to do it as far as actually getting something that holds your knives available. But I have three of those. I have three kids, and they also have, uh, <laughs> they have actually claimed each pack. I appreciate it, Zach. Thanks for being on as well. Uh, but that's where, now, those are the things I use for those. Uh, these are the ones I kind of use for some things that I kind of um, find interesting or I've had around for a while. Uh, so one of the knives in here um, is one of the newer, I mean, I guess one of the older knives that I've had. Uh, if anybody hasn't experienced this one, um, I guess, let's see if anybody knows what it is. Actually, you probably saw the logo already. But anybody know which what knife this is? And if you actually had any experience with it, because uh, I've had good experience with it, uh, but I don't think it gets a lot of play as far as uh, things that are out there now, because uh, it's just so kind of an older thing. It is CH, that it is. So CH knife, so any guess on model number? Yeah, it's, it's amazing for what you get. So it's titanium, uh, ball bearings. Uh, it is going to be a different blade steel. So I believe this one's a VG10 uh, for the blade. I think. I don't even know where they put that as far as information on it. But I'm pretty sure it was a VG10 blade. But this is one that I've had around for a long time. And even though I've handled and came across a lot of different knives, I mean, I have the, the cursory of knife here. This is still one that I really, <laughs> I, I still enjoy it as far as what it is, how much I got it for. Uh, I had it sharpened uh, professionally just to get it sharpened that way. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that's just out there as far as that goes. So especially if you can get it into the high-end collector's hands, and that's kind of, yeah, people get surprised by uh, what it is and uh, what type of action you can get from it. Uh, for I think this one goes for like eighty dollars as far as the price point. Uh, drop of five, so almost had it. Uh, three, I think there's three zero zero one on this one. Three zero zero one. Uh, if you do like the three zero zero one and you're like, oh well, I'll get it in G ten, don't <laughs> because the three zero zero one in G ten is uh, much bigger and uh, fairly poor in its fit and finish. I was really disappointed that because when it came out, I was like, okay, great, 3001 in G10, I'll pick it up. And then I went and got it and then it was just much bigger and it wasn't that great. And I ended up uh, trading it with somebody. What's up, Sharp Spots? How's it going? Yeah, but 3001, uh, really nice. Comes in different uh, anodizations as well if you want to pick those up. Uh, but very smooth um, action for that. Uh, one of the uh, channels that I actually learned about it from uh, was um, House of Wisdom. Uh, so if you haven't checked out his channel, he has a lot of like high-end, high-end knives. And that's one of the knives that he actually still likes as a 3001 uh, for that. And then I have Nakamura. So this one I actually had... Uh, the um, it had the uh, serrated blade on it before, and then I actually went and actually uh, had them switch it out for the plain edge because I prefer the plain edge. Uh, so I did pay for that, of course, as far as getting that switched out. But now I have the Nakamura. Uh, this is the one that's the carbon fiber blue um, pivot ring. So really nice on that. I haven't changed it to the deep carry clip for that. I do have some deep carry clips available, but I have not changed that over yet. Uh, for that one, but that's one that hangs around for a while and then there's a fairly new one so this is the Medford so 3001 
not 301, that was the CH. Uh, so the Medford Smooth Criminal. Uh, so I think it was Zach that I was talking about as far as the Michael Jackson song. Whenever you say Smooth Criminal, you kind of get that little sound in the background and you kind of think about that. But uh, this one uh, is really, really smooth. Uh, and then even for the time I've had it, so some of, the, some of the sounds, I don't know if it comes up on the video, but there's like a tink little sound on it when it opens. Uh, just the sound on this knife is really uh, quite good. And then also uh, one thing that they tout as far as something being really good is as far as there's like no lash on this. So if you actually go and uh, uh, I guess pick up any button lock, uh, I have a few different button locks. And then when you actually go and rock it, I mean, you actually get a little bit of lash on that. Uh, and then this one does not. Uh, so it's actually really well made uh, for what it is. Uh, and then the only thing I do want them to change on it, which I don't think they ever will, but if they just move the flipper tab, so it is a very small flipper tab. If they move that up here, then at least I wouldn't have to either flip it in a downward angle or use a wrist action to actually open it. But I think it would give it enough, um, enough uh, speed to actually open it up if they just move this tab up a bit. Because there is, you can definitely uh, fail it. Um, easily enough for this one. You just gotta really, if you want to open it, you're gonna open it. Uh, but it has a good quality to it, good feel. Uh, that's our feel for that pouch. I do have some Tuya knives, but I do use their, their pouch as well. So thank you to Dave Warren over at Tuya Knives. Uh, but I use their pouches to hold just different knives available. Uh, this one also is just a beautiful knife. So um, we'll throw that up there, see if you guys can guess what that one is as far as in that pouch. And then we'll go from there, but we have another ones in here. So these are other ones that are, again, I just kind of keep around, uh, kind of ones that I, I really like uh, quite a bit. And then this is actually another CH knife uh, here. And this one actually is very similar uh, to one that's out from uh, Best Tech. Uh, the Best Tech has, I forgot the name of the Best Tech. Where is it now? So this one. So these are two knives here. So this is a CH knife. This is the Best Tech knife. Uh, this is their, one of their newer ones. It's kind of more their flagship type of knife uh, for it. This has been out for quite a while. Uh, it's really uh, quite nice that um, they're actually, I don't know if they still do, but they do have um, a fully polished blade uh, for this one. And for some reason, this one, the name's escaping me, but uh, this is a Best Tech knife here. And that's the CH. So having the carbon fiber on it, I actually do like the uh, CH carbon fiber better. That's just a little bit more uh, tight knitted. So this is kind of the, uh, it's a newer trend, I guess it's going to be the carbon fiber G10 as far as that layering that you're going to get from that. That's going to be how that goes, but uh, this is going to be the CH. So there's a 33510 uh, for this one here. And then um, the last I knew they did have uh, one that was fully polished as well as far as the blade. And then CH, if you guys didn't hear uh, through uh, LTK, uh, he did say that, that they are carrying that through uh, White Mountain Knives. Uh, so if you do want to pick up some CH Knives, uh, they do have it uh, through White Mountain. Uh, so that is kind of a cool thing. And everybody knows what that is. I'm going to leave that there so you guys can kind of ponder on that. I don't, I don't remember what that is. Best Tech Knife. And then also guess on that one. This is one I actually love. It's a gorgeous knife. I don't use it very often. I don't really carry it very often, but I just keep it around because I just like it so much. Uh, and what else do we have in this one? And I did pick up one of these. So this is, of course, the Bug Out. Uh, this one that I got on the secondary market. Uh, this one is the one that was uh, the different coloring. Uh, so that kind of the, I think it was the green. And then they did dye it uh, for the scale. Uh, so for the Bug Out, I picked up that one, and then really compared to the bailout, they're very similar. Uh, so this, I mean, this is the bailout, bailout, bug out. 
So these are now uh, ones that uh, Zach went and actually switched the blades over, so they do work if you switch this blade into the bailout scale, uh, but it does make contact uh, with the backspacer. Uh, so that's where that doesn't exactly work. Uh, but another thing that you could do, um, personally, I don't use lanyards, uh, so I actually, now you can take this out as far as that, uh, that pummel and actually just put in, if you do have any, just put in a regular barrel spacer uh, on the back. So you can actually just take that off and then you can just have just a longer bug out. Uh, so that's where uh, these are kind of, I prefer the blade on this. Um, and then some people with larger hands would prefer probably the bailout as far as the sizing, as far as what you're going to sit, because it is quite a bit uh, longer. It's not quite a bit, but I mean, it's decently longer uh, than the other one. And then you also get a little bit more as far as the retention of your hand. So this one just has a single loop or a single ridge. And then on the other one, you're going to have that double ridge for it. That's something, something that's pretty cool. I have not seen that. So are they actually just rounding it out? So they're just taking it and just doing a, a regular drop point type of blade for that? I haven't seen any rewriting, so I might have to look that up to see what they're doing uh, with those. Yeah, I would prefer it that way. Um, I mean, Tantos have their purposes, uh, but I just don't use them very often. Uh, so that's going to be how that goes. And I guess another thing that's kind of fun, um, it's not really fun, but uh, we have... Oh. So I am going to be going through and doing a sale at some point uh, with knives. And then these are all the ones that I'm going to sell. So I'm not dying or anything, but I'm just kind of going through the knives that I have and the ones that I don't use. And these are all the ones that I've decided to sell so far. So, so far, that's going to be what I'm going to be selling. Uh, so, that's going to be, um, I just have to price it to see what I'm going to sell it for and everything. Because uh, it's hard to sell knives. It's easier to it's easier to buy knives uh, than to sell them at Tucson. Uh, there's a TS-80. Uh, absolutely horrible, horrible pocket clip uh, because for some reason they decided to make it square. Um, so if you look on the back back side, like, like why would why like like why would you? It's gotta it's gonna catch on everything. Like, like if I was gonna keep it, I would probably Dremel it to actually give it an angle for it. But there's a TS80, so there's a Tanto. I just think it works really well for the handle scale. I just don't carry it, uh, probably due to the pocket clip. Um, and then so this is one um, that I'll probably be getting rid of a D2 blade for it a TS-80 Yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's a nice blade It's really thick um, blade stock um, It is a Flat grind on both sides a D2 I mean, I mean generous uh, sharpening troil uh, for that yeah yeah Winchester that that is that's one of the worst things about the knife but I saw it uh, and then I was like okay I'm gonna track it down went on eBay uh, went and checked on as far as how much they're selling for and then kind of just waited and then tried to get a good price on it so I got a decent price on it as well uh, but that's the Tucson and then I know this is horrible to say about something you're trying to sell, but like SOG, like I cannot find a SOG that I like. I mean, the Terminus um, XR is one, their newest one. It's it's okay. It's not fantastic, uh, but this is like one of the, I guess this is the second one, because I had the Twitch 2, 
uh, and then uh, that, that has so much like blade play and everything with it. And then like I sent it into Saga. It's like, well, like this is what I'm having issues with. I sent it in. It's like, okay, we'll check it out. I sent it in. They sent it back. They sent, and then like they didn't change anything. So it's just like, well, that's within spec. It's like, well, what 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 do you mean it's within spec? It's like you can like physically like wibble, wiggle the blade. It was like, okay. Uh, so ended up. I was able to uh, pay for a little difference on it. I got the Zoom Mini. Um, I just don't like it. Uh, so, uh, where? <laughs> what's up, Woodland? How's your brother doing? I know that's been a tough time. Uh, but saw like there's a little. Uh, let me take this out of the box. Saw just is a total like redo of their whole brand or something. I don't know. It just, I mean, some people just love Sog, and then they love themselves because how, for how much branding that they do, uh, they're just outrageous. But uh, so there's a button lock, but this is assisted. Uh, but right here, like uh, again, uh, if I was to keep it, I'll probably take this off. Uh, but this little safety thing is like right where you're gonna put your thumb. So you get that digging right into your thumb and it's not great. So this is one that I've had for a while. Uh, it kicks like crazy. I mean, as far as being the assisted knife, um, but uh, it's just been in the, <laughs> I've just had it. Uh, I've tried to trade it off with some folks. And then uh, I just haven't had any takers for it, so I'll put it up for sale, see what happens with that. Yeah, Terminus has a lot of blade play. So that might just be how SOG is. I mean, they just, I mean, it's not, I guess, probably not going to be dangerous. It's just not fantastic feeling. Uh, but. That's going to be one that I'll sell off there, hopefully, or trade it. Uh, we looked at the Tucson uh, V-Knives. Uh, V-Knives is... Anybody have any V-Knives? I, I do like uh, Big Reds as far as what he had. Um, I think Michael Matthew? Matthew. Uh, do for his, uh, one of his knives. Uh, but... It's not bad. I mean, as far as the action for it, yes, code fours are solid. Yes, I have that one. So, especially how thin it is. I mean, this is like, I mean, this is a big pen. So, if you have a big pen, that's pretty much how thick this is. And the only thing that I want to change on it eventually is I want to um, crown the spine on this. Because uh, it's it doesn't it's not horrible, but I just don't like um, having that when I'm actually disengaging. I can actually feel uh, the edges uh, a lot, uh, so that's why I don't like about it. Uh, but this one is the XHP model, uh, and then even S35. I mean, they have the S35 models, uh, which are just still fantastic for like about ninety dollars. Uh, but where did it go? V knife. Oh, there it is. So V knives, um, they're a bit overpriced. Uh, some of their value um, isn't fantastic uh, for it, uh, but I'll be trying to move this one along. And then something, uh, this is the bad thing about it is when you hear like responses from a lot of people, uh, then you normally would go, okay, well, then that might be an issue. Uh, but, but a lot of times their response was, well, this is the reason why we did it that way. Instead of like, okay, well, I'll take your responses and we'll make it better. They're just like, this is just how we do it. Uh, so V knives, um, they have their retail store up in Washington. I don't know if anybody stopped into it, but they sell um, some other uh, household cutlery as well. Uh, but V knives, I went and bought that one on my own. We'll sell that. Uh, what else have we got here? And, and then our rake. Yes, I don't know how they get rake out of that, but rake. Uh, the 801. Uh, it is nice. 
Um, but I don't know. I just haven't carried it. It just kind of just sits around. I did actually get this now from uh, Baz on Blades. So I did get this from him uh, some time ago. Uh, so still check out his channel. Uh, so he's doing um, a lot of other work. Uh, still kind of has a little, few little, a little side projects that come up every now and then. Uh, but this is also one that I went and reached out to them because uh, the actual won't be able to see it, but but the grind is actually off a little bit. Uh, so it's actually um, the tip is basically to one side. It's not you know, a straight tip on it. Uh, so that's where I was just like, well, that's kind of not great. But he's like, I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> when I was asking him about it. Um, but yeah, the 801 is, uh, I mean, full stain, full stainless. Uh, so it is going to be a heavier knife. Uh, still is a nice one, uh, but I just don't use it. So that's where that. So we're going to go for that one. Maybe I'll just have a lot of giveaways if they don't do well for sales. Oop. Then we have the Tuya. Um, so this one I bought as well. So this is going to be the one with my Carter scales. Uh, for the talisman uh, it did take a lot of massaging to get this to work uh, and then that was Dave let me know as far as it could be an issue because there's some of the issues they're having with uh, some of the fitment what's up Neve Knives uh, and then uh, so I did actually have to take um, and file out some of this area for the release uh, because it wasn't fitting properly uh, the actual G10 scale I had to destroy um, because um, it just wasn't coming off, uh, so that was kind of disappointing. Uh, but yep, this one I'll be putting up as well. I just need to get up the pricing on some of these and figure out uh, where I'm going to price it out at as well. Um, this one, um, kind of surprising, but I'm probably going to be selling this one as well. So the Provoke, uh, I just I just don't carry it. Um, I did add, um, so I did a little bit of uh, a relief for this because it was a little bit of a harsh um, release. So I did grind out a little bit for it. Yeah, it's it's an interesting design, Zach, uh, but I just don't use it. Uh, so this is one that was kind of interesting for, I guess, um, it deployed in my pocket before. So as I was playing around with it, you can wave this out uh, so when you actually have it in your pocket and you point it out, uh, then uh, the bad thing about, I guess the good thing about a regular wave is the tip of the knife is out of your pocket when you're waving it out. Uh, but this, when it catch, catches in your pocket, so as it's waving out, it's waving into your pants pocket. Uh, so uh, to, on two occasions, I had it, um, when I was pointing out of the pocket, I wasn't as like sure about it. So when I pulled it out, uh, I had it uh, stuck in my pocket, uh, fully deployed uh, with the fabric inside the actual um, part of it. So I didn't cut myself, but uh, it was kind of a hairy situation to try and get uh, that out. Uh, so that was not fantastic. They do have a sheath for this now, so you can pick it up through um, CRKT's site uh, for a sheath, so you can actually um, belt carry it. And I actually did uh, increase the detent on this, uh, so you can actually take out uh, take off the pocket clip and there's access to the actual uh, spring uh, so uh, when I first got it I think it was about two to three uh, pounds of pull so actually the detent uh, to actually deploy uh, was about two to three pounds and then raised it up to almost about five and that's actually where uh, uh, Joe Caswell has said it should have been uh, so if anybody ever went back on some of his streams he actually created a fixture uh, so CRKT as well as millet can actually test the detent of it. And so that was kind of an interesting thing to be kind of a part of that, uh, as far as taking that information and kind of running with it. So I'll be doing that one. But yeah, that's a provoke. Uh, we have Bastion. So that's this one here. I think there's a Falcon uh, for it. Gerber, where's a Gerber? Do I have a Gerber out here? 
Uh, let's try and go back a little bit. Somebody's talking about Gerber. I don't know. I don't have any Gerbers up for sale. Gerber's still a one that I really hope that they do well, uh, but their quality control is still to be desired. Um, that's even what they said um, from at least what I got off of Nick Nick Shabazz's, uh, um video that he put out. So that's something that's kind of interesting with that. Uh, no, no steel wells. Um, no, I don't have any steel wells. Um, I've tried some of them. Um, they're not something that really draws to me. Like it, it clicks some of the boxes. I really want them to get back to where they were because it was like for a long time it was cut jack, cut jack. It was just a really popular knife. Uh, but I don't know. Just they don't really have anything that's really fantastic. The end lock is one thing I want to still check out as well. Uh, but I just haven't been able to see that. And then uh, for the Pastron, I was going to try and get it for the Pastron group. Uh, but uh, they've already kind of distributed the ones that they had uh, and then so they don't have an option to get that Yeah, I don't have any of the Gerbers for sale, uh, but I do have some Gerbers Oh these ones yeah, the best techs. Yeah, this is one that I didn't do. Uh, so I was going to do a collaboration type of video with uh, the knife beater. Uh, so that's kind of where I started. I was kind of leaving him comments on his videos. Uh, but this is one that I haven't even used. Uh, we're going to do kind of a, a collaboration video where uh, like um, we kind of tossed the knife back to each other and did kind of a, a joint review um, but we weren't even in the same place it was kind of a fun little idea but it never really came to uh, for, um, really didn't really came to anything but this is kind of the Thor I think if I'm not mistaken oh Thorn Best Tech Thorn yeah but that was going to be how that was going to happen with that uh, for that one there and this other best tech uh, was the beluga uh, this one I got from uh, I think I got this from Wes uh, who is now the best tech rep uh, so before he was the best tech rep I picked up this this one from him the beluga uh, this is actually my first best tech it has a little bit of a rock to it though so I might not sell that one, but we'll see. I haven't really been hard on the knife either, so just some things that happen. Uh, Kershaw, uh, the, I'm probably going to do the concierge uh, for the Kershaw, and then uh, I have a brawler. Uh, the brawler I might do as a giveaway too, because it's not a very expensive knife, uh, but, oops, sorry, there's on the microphone there. So concierge. Interesting pocket clip for it. Um, I don't like how the um, the liner lock is. Uh, if they would have put a chamfer on this side, um, because it is a little bit sharp in release, uh, which is really the only thing that I don't like that much about it. And it has a really weird uh, disengagement. So when I disengage the knife, uh, it has kind of a, a weird feeling to it. As far as how that is. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that works. Yeah, Swordfish and, and seems to get a lot of good reviews for it. Yeah, I think I made Valtech mad too, which is bad. And because we, he was going to, if anybody remembers the doing the blind knife reviews, um, he was going to uh, actually sponsor one of them. And then it just, everything uh, didn't really come together, and then it kind of went longer, and then then we just didn't do round three. Uh, so um, that's where I think that kind of fell through uh, for Valtech. 
Uh, so if anybody has, has regular communication with them, uh, do apologize on my behalf for that, because uh, I may have burned the bridge now for that one. Because he was actually, now he did do some uh, pass rounds as well uh, for some of the knives, so I do appreciate him being involved uh, with that as well. And then what else do we got? Yeah, yeah, follow Women Carry Knives. I mean, her as well as um, Therapeutic Edge, uh, so her husband. Uh, so uh, very good follows as well uh, to see um, kind of where their journey takes them as well. Uh, Spyderco Pair 3, yeah, good. Uh, I don't have any, the only Spyderco I have is the Delica. Uh, so I haven't really found one that's really drawn me to it. I think I'm going to look at probably the Sage 5 Lightweight when it comes out, but Concierge. It's going to go brawler is one of the older um, uh, speed safes uh, for that just kind of going through uh, some of the knives available i don't remember what model this one is either this is one of the old ch's and it actually has no branding on it whatsoever so it's completely without branding you can never get it sharp um, I, yeah, I mean, it's decent. I mean, it's pretty thick behind the edge for the brawler. Where is it now? There it is. I mean, it's the Tonto as far as that goes, but it's just really... Yeah, I mean, it's alright. A uh, small Kershaw. Uh, the other Kershaw I showed was the uh, what is it now? The concierge uh, with a little interesting pocket clip for it. That's what that one was. And then yeah, we have the CH knife. Uh, this was kind of it changes color quite a bit uh, for this one. I haven't handled the induction. Uh, I've seen it before, but I've never handled it. Yeah, that's not very good for the Kershaw, just not being able to get an edge for it. Yeah, compression locks are really fun as well. Uh, I do like uh, the... I'm losing the name of it. Uh, somebody's coming out with the compression lock with a button release uh, for the... I think there's the Pair, pair 2. Um, something like We Love Knives or something is coming out with that one. Uh, that should be a really, uh, really quite a cool one. So this is a long name for this one. The Arctic Ocean Sailor. So there's a bag Magnum by Boker. So that, that monster of a knife. Oh, let's go back in. Yeah, it's pretty cool blade shape on that one. And then we have this one that actually works pretty well. Um, this is another Magnum by Boker. Uh, this one is the Alligator. Tip down carry, but deep carry clip. Action's not bad on it. It still has um, the mill lines. Uh, it's very minimal, but it actually goes uh, this way, down the blade. Uh, you can't really see that, but pretty cool little knife. Little no, the texturing is right where you're going to grab it as well uh, for that one, so it's pretty cool. Anybody remember what company that is that's going to be having that uh, special edition one as far as the pair pair three? Uh, they have like a titanium hardware button lock release. I just forgot who that was because I haven't actually purchased anything from them. Uh, this is kind of more of a rare one. Uh, you don't really see it very often. Uh, the GSD. Uh, this is that one. So this is one of the Liang Ma's designs. Uh, so this one's going to go as well. I just don't carry it. Uh, but it's pretty cool as far as the design goes. Uh, interesting pot clip you don't see very much from CRKT. Uh, basically, get S done.
not s, you know, the other word, but uh, that's going to be uh, what this one means as far as that. And then most times you see the one with the serrations on it, so not too often as far as the uh, full flat grind. And then this next one I got from LTK's. Uh, so I bought this from LTK's uh, sale. Now this one's actually, um, from everything that I see on it, this one's made by Bastion as well uh, for this knife here. So this is also a laying mod design. Yep, the Nuke. Uh, so still has uh, the little light for it. So it glows in there, glows on the back. So that has the moon glow throughout here, throughout the middle, uh, also in the pivot area where it has the glow. Yeah, so another Liang Ma design uh, for it. Uh, pretty chunky uh, as far as the uh, weight and full stainless, uh, but from everything I'm seeing, it looks like uh, that's made from uh, the folks that or at least the company that produces for uh, Bastion. But that's that one that's going to go as well. Just hard to just get to the point of selling stuff because I have to post it and hopefully people pick it up. Uh, then have to, it's just so much easier to buy stuff instead of sell stuff. Uh, but you got this one, the Yobo tool, the Silverback. That one's gonna go. I have some other ones I'll probably uh, work on getting rid of as well, but it, it just I gotta get the process down as far as how to sell stuff because that's always kind of difficult, at least what I'm finding. Then we have this another rake. Then these are the ones that are just kind of sitting around, not really doing anything with them. And so I've got to kind of make some room, uh, kind of pay for the other things that may have been purchased. Yeah, we'll probably do a YouTube sale, kind of what an LTK does. Oop, wrong side. So this one's kind of confusing because it's got, it's got tabs on both sides. So I went and tried and flip this side, which isn't going to work. Uh, so I flip it from this side. Another CH knife. And then this is the newest Bastion uh, that came out, which I don't remember what name of it is. And they don't, oh, Striker. So this is a Striker uh, from Bastion. So it's a fairly nice looking blade for it. Uh, I went through all their new ones and this is the one that really drew to me as far as actually picking it up. Uh, but, Thumbs does work well. A flipper tab is kind of small and not have any jumping on it. Uh, so uh, it is uh, not easy uh, to open uh, for that. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm finding with this. And also uh, the blade does make contact uh, with the backspacer. Uh, so I did uh, let them know about that. And then they responded back that um, you could probably it, it could be fixed with a few with a regrind. So, yep, I yeah I agree. But they didn't offer to take it back or anything. They just said that could be fixed with a regrind. I was like, okay. Uh, so that's where it is making contact. It has a little bit of roll uh, for the blade. Uh, but kind of see what happens with that one. And that we talked about. That we talked about. This is the first one from K-Bar, as far as their flipper, uh, so uh, not fantastic. If they're going to go with their first ever for their company, they probably should have done uh, something a little different. Uh, interesting blade style on it, a kind of a wood type of G10 uh, type of coloration on it. Uh, but this is K-Bar's first, and then also uh, was in, I think this is an 8CR, as far as the coloring. Yeah, Matchdrop has some great prices too. 
So if anybody hasn't donated uh, to get into the giveaway for that too, I mean, it's $1,200 in knives uh, that are being given away. Uh, and then you're not going to pay for anything except for your donation. And if you're going to donate anyway, um, then great. And even if, if you don't win, then, well, great. You're donating to a good cause uh, for either one that you choose. Uh, but those are all the ones i got to figure out uh, how to sell or get rid of in some manner. We'll bring these back up just to show again. So these are all the ones for the giveaway. Um, seven knives that are going to go. If anybody wants to see any of those, I can take it out of the box. Uh, but you can leave that in the comment. I'll do that. Uh, what else do we got? That's about it for that. Yep, Thresher's in there, uh, so that's going to be part of the giveaway. So uh, we're not going to have any type of thing where you go, I want, I'm going to donate and I want this knife. We're going to donate, we'll get all the names. Um, we'll do one per person as far as a win, and then we'll go through and do a random generator. Okay, you got that knife, random generator, you got that knife, and kind of figure it out that way. Uh, so yeah, Drop's doing a really good job uh, for a lot of their collaborations. And then this one knife here, uh, this one I believe is made by Real Steel, at least from looking at the pocket clip. Uh, but this is a friction folder uh, that is an A an A lock. Uh, so it actually has, um, it's basically a see-through design. So, so actually a slip joint that doesn't have a back spring. So this is actually one that I'm, I'm liking a lot. A uh, good uh, blade uh, length for it. So it's like a 3.25 for blade length and it's a slip joint uh, which is really interesting uh, so it has a really positive lockup in the open position uh, i've taken apart uh, i've lubricated it and i put in some nano grease uh, it it was pretty smooth already and it smoothed out even more uh, with the nano grease but that's one that is kind of like a mixed bag like i put it on instagram and people are like that's ugly it's like yeah i like it uh, so that's kind of an interesting thing. I mean, everybody has their own uh, perception as far as what they like, what they don't like. Uh, so that's something that's... I like that one. Uh, this is one that I, I kept around. Snap lock. So it's 360 degree. Took off the pocket clip. Pocket clip is horrible. Uh, so you think if they re-released re re it, they would give you a better pocket clip, but uh, they did not. But I took off the back clip and now I can do it this ambidextrous for both hands. It's kind of just a nice little fidget toy there. Uh, and then, yeah, still 2,000 subscriber giveaway. So once we get there, um, if we get there, uh, then we'll do the giveaway for those as well. And then we didn't have any guesses on what that is yet, but you can probably see a little design on there. Um, also through um, messerdepot.de, they did send in some coins. So these are some awesome coins. So I know Sharp Spot, if they're still on, they made some coins as well. Uh, but these are some coins too. What's up, Dom? Uh, so these are some coins that they made uh, for um, each year. And so there's a second year that they did it. And they threw that in there. And also Messer Depot like gives you candy. Um, so that's kind of a, an added little bonus. Uh, so you get a knife and you get some candy as well. That's just kind of an added little thing which is kind of an interesting thing there too. Uh, but that's something that they sent in. Uh, what else? We'll go through the drawers here. Uh, anybody have this Artisan? Uh, I'm finding that I'm having a hard time reviewing it because um, I don't really like it. But it just, it's kind of out there as far as the design goes. Major cleaver. Uh, one thing that I, I found uh, kind of difficult about it um, is in the closed position, like it just has so much, I mean, so much slack to it. I mean, it's just, I'm probably going to reach out to um, Russell to see if that's actually how that's supposed to be, but uh, I just don't like that. So it's, it is kind of that, yeah, kind of a straight edge kind of razor. Uh, it has this little thing for the clip. Which side is it? So this opens up. And you clip it onto a bag or something uh, as you go. Um, but yeah, that, the blade plate in the closed position is something that I don't really like too much. 
I mean, it's not going to be anything that's dangerous. So the blade's not going to come out where it's going to poke you or anything. Uh, but I just don't like that in the closed position as far as where that is because you think that would be like on top of the um, one of the stop pins, and then you would actually be having that hold down. But um, yeah, I don't really like it. So I'm having a difficult time with this one um, to do a review on that one. And we talked about the bug out bailout. Um, really, I think they should have just released so the bug out, and then they should have just called the this the bug out tanto because uh, it's not that much different it's kind of like it's not even another family member it's kind of like just the same it's like the same knife generally uh, this one if anybody wants to throw it out in 20 bucks uh, this is actually a pretty solid knife uh, I tried to compare this one uh, to uh, the, the dosher uh, for this one so this is going to be locked back uh, but at least my lockback uh, has a little bit of play to it. And then this one's the QSP. Uh, for this one, um, 20 bucks as far as the most places that I can find it on. And it's like 440 Yeah, the pink one. I mean, this is some of the colors. They have a new blue color out there. Uh, but it's really solid lockup. So, I mean, even for this one, does anybody think that this would do well with like an S35 blade? Because it seems like a pretty solid design and a set up for it but I don't know if like if they upgraded this to like s35 blade and then just kept I think the washers are fine because it has phosphorus browns washers in it and then just did a uh, higher end blade steel um, maybe a different scale but I mean the g10 would work fine I think so probably I would say like deep carry pocket clip higher end blade steel and then see I mean they could probably come in at like 30 bucks or something for it any opinion on that as far as the QSP uh, if they actually did a higher end blade steel for this one here if that would actually be something that people would be interested in uh, for that or if that's kind of just <laughs> me thinking it would be a good idea Mind you, a skyline it's like I got a skyline somewhere in here the skyline was actually my first knife too There's a skyline. Yeah, that's what I think uh, for it if they upgraded the steel on it, because that's where I think some people stay away from it, because this is going to be the 440C. The 440C is still decent as far as the budget blade goes, um, but I think if they actually went and upgraded to a higher end blade steel, uh, this would be like kind of that budget, budget price point winner uh, for them. And then we should be able to really sell a lot of them. At least that's what I think. I don't have any kitchen knives. I didn't even know they had kitchen knives, actually. Uh, I do have some fixed blades for them, as far as QSP. Uh, but I do not have any kitchen knives from them. And talking with them, I didn't really actually... I didn't realize they had kitchen knives. Dom, is that something that you picked up or did you, um, are you thinking about picking up some of those? Yeah, I appreciate it, Connor. Yeah, it's hard to do some of these things because it's like, you want to try and provide the information out there and try and figure out your own path. Because there's so many reviewers out there and you want to try and provide things that are maybe a little bit different. And that's kind of where I think I'm the only one that still uses this thing as far as the Lyman pull gauge. Uh, so I found what I use it for is D10 weight. I use it for uh, pocket clip as far as how much pressure, I mean, weight it takes to get it out of your pocket. I use it for my sharpness test. And then I use it for something else too. But that's for the Lyman pull gauge. Uh, so I can do that in the weight as far as... Uh, in grams as well as in pounds and grams well pounds and grams and um, yeah pounds and grams and so that's what I use for this but I think I'm the only one that still uses it I think I saw um, Holt Blade Works talk about as far as detent as far as uh, what they try and get theirs and as far as a range and I think they're about the same as far as two to three pounds as far as what they have uh, for detent and that's what they kind of shoot for 
Oh, you saw it on Terra Fanatic? Oh, cool. Maybe it's spreading. I'm starting a revolution. Oh, maybe not, but... Yeah, everybody has their own opinions, which is a really good thing, because, I mean, some people really like um, certain knives. And some people like large knives. Some people want to have full shut action. Some people don't want to have full shut action. Um, it's just really, there's just so many things available for everybody. Uh, what's the name on that one? Uh, Winchester? Uh, I don't know which one you're talking about. So let me know as far as like the pull gauge. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, but as far as fall shot action, this is one that I enjoy so very much. And then the sound on that, uh, I don't know well, how well that's coming through, uh, but there's the sound on uh, a marksman is something that could probably bring a smile to your face as far as that goes. And then it's actually one that you could guillotine yourself on too. So even the adjustment on it is pretty cool. Uh, so you would uh, loosen this up if you need to adjust as far as the lockup on it. Uh, then you can do that as well. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, this is one that's going to stay in my collection as well. And then for the SK Blades ones, I mean, it has the full warranty uh, through Buck as well. And at least this one is S35. So this is an S35 blade. Uh, and then, so I don't see it going anywhere. Uh, so I'm going to keep this one around, even though I don't have any orange knives. Uh, this is the only orange knife I have, uh, but it's a really great knife. Uh, so if anybody does not have a marksman, I would recommend it. Yeah, it's usually really, really easy to change up the lockup on it. Yeah, the SK-1 is, I mean, it's the one that has G10 on it, so it's going to be the lighter feel to it. Uh, if you do like the aluminum, then yeah, you want to stick with the other one, and you could probably swap the blade. So if you want to get the aluminum scale, uh, but you want to get an S35 blade, uh, then that's where you could probably swap this blade out and then, well, sell off the other one or keep it, whichever way you want to do it. But uh, SK Blades does um, really good work for it. Um, this is also another SK that I'm trying to... Now that I kind of figured out as far as at least the, the fixed blade uh, review style that I want to do, and it seemed like it went over well. I didn't have anybody tell me that I'm absolutely totally ridiculous on it. Big Red, what's up? Uh, so this is one, uh, so once I figured out uh, as far as my format for fixed blades, and again, in doing this fixed blade review, I didn't have anybody saying that you're a complete idiot. You don't know what you're doing for fixed blades. Uh, so hopefully that works out pretty well. Uh, but this one, as far as the Ranger, uh, this is the one that I'm going to look at uh, for the next fixed blade uh, as far as the review for. And this is the Micarta. Uh, it's super slick though. Uh, so that's one thing I don't like about it. Oh yeah, good. You know, always got to get that work done. Uh, but yeah, just just on, just doing things. Just a random thing to sign on. Uh, but very slick for the handle. Uh, but it cuts extremely well uh, for this blade. So this is a D2 blade for them. And it's just, it just cuts nicely. So out of the other fixed blades, uh, this is actually one that actually cuts a lot better uh, in my um, little knowledge of it. So I'm, I'm getting that, that wood to roll on there. And it's just cutting so well. So with a D2 blade on it, um, just something with the way that they have the grind on it or something's done. Uh, this is a just really, really great uh, to actually do uh, for cutting. Uh, but then the downside of it is it only has this sheath. And that's not fantastic. So I'd rather have Scott Carey with this knife, then that would be that would be really nice. And also if I had a different blade shape. I just don't like the clip point too much. But it is a hunting knife, so it is one that's pretty good. 
Let's see what I was saying. Yeah, Scott carries the way that I like it, and this one didn't imprint very much, so I put up a little video on Instagram for it, and it didn't imprint very much on in me. Uh, so, so granted, if you're like wearing tighter clothes, it's going to be a little bit different, but um, I like this one as far as that goes, and as far as this one in Scout Carry. And I'll see how the Kydex sheath is for this one too. Uh, so you can actually take off the scales for it. So there's the Micarta. Uh, they also do have the um, Refure Noble uh, for it too. So they have Refure, uh, Micarta, and then you could take it off and you can do the wrap uh, if you would like to as well. Uh, but we have the... Re no. So... Yeah, still back to the review side or the giveaway side. So once we get up to the 2000, we'll have Nano Oil, KPL, currently Hogue, currently Pop-Up Leather, 15% uh, off if you want to use Blade Stir as far as the coupon code for that. And then um, some uh, some part of the sale does come back to help out the channel as far as that affiliate link. Uh, but those are currently the giveaway items provided by those brands. So I do appreciate them very much. Uh, for giving those over for the giveaway and yep we still have the other giveaway for charitable giveaway uh, coming up as well oh yeah man. so charitable giveaway uh, is going pretty well now we have very good chances uh, for the people that entered uh, so uh, the total value on it was uh, twelve hundred twenty five dollars um, we're not there yet for the total value um, so uh, the giveaway, um, so I'm not taking away from anybody that gave um, to the giveaway, uh, but we're not um, to where I kind of want to have a goal. So I'd rather have a goal of getting uh, basically double the value of what the knives are worth, basically about a $2,400 um, uh, donation to one of those organizations. Uh, but uh, even if we don't, uh, the people that gave, um, fantastic, and we'll have those giveaways and they'll enjoy the knives as well because we haven't reached the $1,200 mark as far as what those knives are actually worth. Uh, so if you want to still give, uh, you still have the until the 9th. So if anybody wants to um, promote that or talk about it, uh, it's still available for that. And then those are all the knives that are available too. And then some of them are still, I mean, this one is the one with the Mokotai uh, type of uh, scale. I mean, not scale, but the pocket clip and everything. Also has the ring for it. But this is a giveaway for it. So I mean this is where you can actually just donate and then possibly win one of these. And especially I think right now the odds of getting a knife is probably about probably about fifty percent chance or so. So 50%, maybe 33% um, if we go about that. So do appreciate it. So folks that are saying that you got yours in, great. Uh, and then uh, we'll hopefully get some of these out to you folks and see which one you guys win. Uh, this is one that actually, I found this to be kind of an interesting knife. Uh, I don't know why they didn't change it uh, for the giveaway, but this is a Duhara. Uh, so... It has pocket clips, I mean, uh, uh, thumb stubs, uh, but you cannot use them. Uh, it has what would be a good flipper tab, as far as a front flipper, that you also cannot use. Uh, because the button lock locks it in the closed position as well as the open position. So it has nice action for it. Uh, yeah, it's great. And so Dom, appreciate it. Uh, so that's just something that I'm able to give back. Uh, still, you get a good chance of winning something, uh, but it's just another way of doing things as far as helping out, as far as extending past the community. Uh, but yeah, so it has the button lock. So decent lockup. Uh, this is made by Wii. So open, closed, and closed, it's locked. So, so what I would have thought would be a flipper tab or a front flipper, you can't do. You can't use the thumb studs. The thumb studs actually don't make contact, so it actually is not a stop pin. That's the only way you can open it. So, eh, I don't know. Do you think that would come up in some type of thing? I know that's the way that I think it was designed. 
So they just kind of transferred it over, but somebody probably should have been like, hey, maybe we should change that a little bit. And what's your folks' take on, I guess, the um, the gravity drop? That's one thing I put into my last review uh, was for gravity drop versus inertia. Uh, so that's one thing that I brought up for that. I guess I think there's a little bit of a, like, multiple sides for that as far as if you can shake a knife open, that's a bad thing because it's a gravity drop, but it's not a gravity drop, at least in my opinion, because uh, it's like, this is this knife is not going to come out with gravity uh, for it, but if I wanted to, uh, I can inertia flip it. Uh, so that's where, at least for me, I have that as far as uh, my terminology for it. Uh, so some people would say that as far as like that's a gravity or dangerous as far as that goes because it, it's going to come out in your pocket. Uh, but uh, that's not something that, at least in my opinion, I think as far as gravity because gravity is not going to go anywhere uh, with a knife. Um, maybe if you jumped hard enough, then it would come out. Uh, but as far as gravity side, it's not going to happen with gravity. But it will happen if you want to deploy it uh, as far as inertia. So you're basically uh, having to overcome uh, that that weight. So if it has like a two pound uh, thing there, uh, you're basically uh, creating two pounds of force to actually flip the blade open, if that makes sense. So let me know as far as what you guys think about that as well. Yeah, so that's my opinion on it. Um, so I don't know how well or how broad that is as far as that uh, mentality, because I do see some other channels I say that well, it's a gravity um, open knife, uh, so that's kind of where it's dangerous or anything else. So uh, that's why I, I think I differ a little bit on that opinion, and that's kind of my reasoning for that. So I'm always open to changing as far as the way I think about things, if it is different, uh, but that's kind of where that comes about. Yeah, I mean, it could be. I mean, that's where Canada, I think, is right, as far as gravity, knives, and everything else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's where I think it would be doing it's on own, but but it, you come you come across different terminologies and like some people would refer to this as a gravity uh deployment, so gravity. Um I guess it's a multiplication of gravity because you're flicking it open. So in a sense that's correct. It is a gravity open. Uh, but you're just creating that. So that's why I call it inertia. Uh, so that's why I have a little bit of few as far as when I try and figure out a knife, I kind of figure out as far as what type of deployment methods it might have. And that's kind of what I try and also communicate uh, to you folks uh, with that. Yeah, gravity knives are ban banned, uh, but yeah, that's where I think it's a little bit of a misconception on what a gravity knife is. Uh, what else? This is a horrible knife. Did anybody get this one from, uh, uh, what was it, Stat Gear? So this is part of their sale that they were having. Uh, so you got this knife for free. So it's hard to complain about a free knife, but it's a, it's a pretty horrible knife. Um, but Yeah, Bally's, yeah, I would agree. Big Red, do you love the wolf tack? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't like it. I, I tried to... <laughs> I tried to even um, tighten it up a little bit because it's a little bit off-centered. And then once I tightened it up, then it wasn't... Uh, the backlock wasn't locking up properly. So I just left it the way it was when I got it. It's a free knife. I mean, I guess it's hard to complain about a free knife, but I'm, playing, I'm complaining about a free knife because it's, it's pretty bad in my opinion, uh, for that. So that will probably be a giveaway. Uh, so there's a lot of giveaways going on right now. I mean, just about everybody's channel has a giveaway uh, going on. Uh, so it's hard to compete with some of those. Uh, but we'll see how that is. And then one of the knives I got uh, for working at Blade Show with QSP is this knife. So if anybody has the piglet, uh, there's the piglet um, on steroids. 
Um, but this is the piglet with Damasteel and Raphir Noble. Uh, so the kind people of QSP uh, gave me this knife uh, for helping them at Blade Show. Uh, so that was just uh, beyond fantastic uh, for getting this one in. That's this one here. This is a pretty slick scale. So if anybody's actually handled Raphir, uh, it is um, it is very slick because uh, it is a, they see a, a composite or resin and it does have the floating material inside of it so you can definitely look, take a look at it for some time and kind of dive into it yeah, but yeah and also damasteel so it's not Damascus it is a damasteel blade yeah, for this one But that one I don't use very often, but they did get that one for free. Uh, so I'll cherish that. <coughs> oh, oh, man. <coughs> Sorry, I heard somebody's ears wake everybody up. Um, I should have brought a drink with me or like coffee or something. And then this one I'm going to send over to my uncle uh, because he hunts. I don't hunt. Uh, but this is one that's the field torque. So if anybody's had experience with this. Or if anybody actually wants to experience this knife, I can probably send it to you afterwards if you're going to do some hunting. Uh, so now this is uh, what he designed. Uh, Chris Stuckel uh, is the designer of this one. Uh, so I met him at Blade Show as well, and he sent me home with one of these. Uh, so this is actually to do the skinning of your animal. And then so basically so you don't need to worry about um, getting the guts and everything else but yeah it's like a crab claw uh, so that's the kind of design on that one it comes with the sharpener with it too that uh, I put somewhere and also is able to separate the um, the joint so that's where you can actually get in there and actually um, separate the joint uh, to get the full um, breakdown uh, but those are available through Amazon too. Uh, but I tried to put it out to the pass around group, but there's not a lot of people that are hunting or the hunting season is not up and running yet. Uh, so I don't have any takers on that one to actually check it out. Uh, but there's a little sharpener that comes with it. So it has the carbide type sharpener and you can run it through as far as getting that uh, blade sharp. So that's going to be not really one that you're going to put on a cami or anything. Uh, so it comes with a sharpener for that as well. But I'm going to see how that works because uh, he does a lot of skinning and everything else and hunting. Um, and then so I showed him a video as far as how it works. And he said, yeah, it seems like it might work well. So he's going to give it a try uh, to see if it works. But if anybody else wants to check that out, uh, once it comes back to me, I can send it out uh, to somebody else. If somebody wants to do a review on that. <laughs> What else we got? It's going to be hard to catch them all, though, Zach. Uh, but uh, so, is there anything else that you folks want to check out on the table? I wanted to talk about. Have any questions for me? <laughs> I guess you could try it with a fish. It might work. Might be hard to get the initial puncture though. I like that one. And I'm thinking about getting this one um, laser etched. So I'm thinking about it. I think Matthew is the one that does that. No, I'm forgetting the name, but somebody on um, Facebook that does a lot of the laser etching. So I was thinking about getting this one done, or I was going to get the Tangram Vector. Because the Vector is super slick in hand. So I was almost thinking about getting the Vector done. So this one laser, laser etched. Get some more grip on this thing. And add some design. Yeah, so, yeah, I was thinking either this one or that one. 
because I like this one, I'm going to keep it. But I also like this, and I'll probably keep it. But it's kind of bad because I think the the laser etching is going to cost more than I bought the knife for. But I mean, if you like something enough, it doesn't really matter too much. Yep, Buck Smart, Buck Marksman, uh, SK Blades exclusive. Uh, that's called the Inferno. Uh, so that's this one here. So I do have the Gray Ghost, uh, which is all also available through SK Blades. Uh, it is uh, made uh, by Buck, uh, so you have the full warranty warranties and everything for it. Uh, this one, uh, Buck's Marksman, uh, the price was a uh, 109 when they had it. I think right now the Gray Ghost is going for about 125 ish. Uh, S35 blade. Uh, for it as well. DNA lasering. I might have to check that one out. But yeah, that one is Buck Marksman. And then, anybody have a Skaha 2? Like, that's what I'm thinking about. Like, if, if that's going to be a worthwhile purchase or not uh, for the Skaha 2. I feel like if I buy the Skaha 2, then, then they're going to come out with the Skaha 3. And I may be like, oh. I just bought the two, uh, but how's it going? Uh, have a great night. I think you said it was like 2.30 or something there, so take care, Omega. Um, but, I mean, I guess anybody having a Skaha 2 experience one, uh, had anything like that? Because that's one that I'm thinking about, um, but it's going to be hard. Um, and it's like two hundred dollars. I think is the pricing now. It's like one eighty something plus shipping, uh, if you can get onto the list. Um, but yeah, everybody does rave about it, and that's why I'm like, that's why I'm thinking about like that would be a good one to pick up. Uh, but, but I don't know. Yeah, so Scott too. At least what Zach said is the is better. Uh, so I mean, they put the. Um, was it the the puck clip they changed on it? Uh, I think they actually added a detent ramp as well. Uh, at least I th think I saw that on one of their Instagram posts. Oh, Zach, you picked up a Skaha too. Well, what color did you get? Anything that you guys feel that the channel should improve on? Because I feel like, I mean, there's always things to improve on. Like, hopefully, you know, people enjoy the content with what I bring out. Uh, but that's where I'm trying to figure out, like, um, if there's anything else that's kind of missing uh, from what I'm providing. If the pace doesn't go well, uh, if you like to have the things moved in different places. Like, I actually moved, recently I moved, like, the comparison to the end of the video. If anybody really cared about that, I moved it to the end. Blade Show West. Doing anything special? No, I just planned on attending. Uh, I want to actually enjoy it this time. Uh, <laughs> if I end up going, because uh, the first one I did, like I just concentrated on interviews the whole time. Uh, Blade Show Atlanta, uh, which I went with QSP, so I was at the QSP booth the whole time and didn't really get to experience the show. Uh, so hopefully, Blade Show West, I can actually hang out with folks uh, and actually enjoy the show, go and stop by booths, do all those things. Oh, cool. Gonna get set up for Blade Show West. So, yeah, not doing anything special. Um, I think we'll probably just meet up with folks that are there, hopefully, uh, and then kind of figure those things out. Because uh, I do want to just enjoy the show. Uh, I'll probably still, uh, knowing me, I'm gonna still want to do interviews. So I'll still try and do those things. Uh, but I'm not gonna be doing um, probably as many. And I'll try and uh, at least get some more things in hand uh, so I can actually figure that out. As far as how well, what I like and everything else, yeah, it should be great fun. Yeah, good. I mean, that saves a lot of money too if you're able to stay with friends uh, in the area. Well, I'm local, so I could bring anything with me. <laughs> so I'll probably not drive up and down each day. Uh, so I could probably bring uh, new knives uh, with with me anytime. I guess yeah, you have to check everything. So that was kind of uh, when I went to Atlanta. I had no knives that I took with me because I I didn't check anything. I just took a carry on, and you can't take anything in a carry on. You can't take anything on your person. So yeah, I was like I went up there with absolutely no knives to blade show. 
that was kind of a not great kind of feel like like I guess how people feel with their cell phone now where it's like you kind of feel like you're missing something that's kind of how I felt for the whole thing what else do we have RWL, it's, it's just a different um, steel manufacturer. So yeah, it's going to be uh, about the CPM 154, which is still a good steel as well. Uh, but uh, a lot of the different ones are just made by different companies. So you have the CPMs and you have, um, now I'm missing all the brands, but um, yeah, all the different brands, they have like different ones that are just similar in composition, similar in performance, uh, if he treated correctly, uh, but it's just made by a different company. So that's where you get some of the, the variants for that or some of the differences and there's a lot of steel charts out there um in the descriptions i have i think two different steel charts that i have in my description that you could take a look at those uh and they're they're pretty decent as far as um, their information that's on there as well it's not gonna be a bad drive uh, going up to blade west yeah such so a charts there that uh, has their steel testing. Um, it actually they incorporated um, also um, the um, the HRC and the composition, or maybe just the HRC. They cut. They uh, went and actually uh, utilized the information that I'm compiling uh, from the different people that are sending in blades, and then so they actually uh, pulled some of that HRC information onto their spreadsheet. So it's kind of it's always collaboration. I mean, it's nothing like that's my information and you can't have it. Uh, so it's just one thing that's just more that's out there. Yeah, yeah, I can see eight hours. I mean, you probably have that time in the airport and everything else, but it'll probably make it a lot more enjoyable just to fly. Yeah, it's a late live stream. I think it's been going, I mean, it's a one hour and 27 minutes, so hopefully it hasn't been too boring for everybody else. Uh, but also, if you have any questions, uh, if you just stopped in, uh, let me know. Ooh, 12 hour drive yeah yeah I'd rather fly on some of those I mean it's nice to drive I drove over to Yellowstone Park uh, from Oregon to Yellowstone it was a good drive I mean you get to stop in different places and everything else but there's a point in the trip where you go and like I just want to get home and then at that point you're like still two days out or something it just kind of takes away from it a little bit uh, but driving's still pretty fun Good. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, so anything else that you guys have questions on? I mean, I can go through my knife rolls. I don't think I have anything else that's really cool that I have out here. Um, we still have some QSP knives from the show. Oh, what else we got? I touched on the bug outs and the ledge. The ledge is up here. This knife grew on me as well for the ledge. Uh, so when I first got it in, I was kind of taken aback by not having a half stop. Um, and then even geared towards gear, talked about it. And it's a better idea to not have a half stop for it. And it's so it's grown on me quite a bit for that. And then it's one that you can actually um, use entirely. So um, as you have, are cutting, oh, let me get something. So as you're cutting, I mean, this is where you can take it all the way um, to the handle. And you're still able to cut uh, so that's one thing that's nice I mean it doesn't have a choil for it uh, but I mean you can fully now um, go all the way to the actual handle and still be able to cut with it uh, which is pretty awesome as far as that goes uh, and then um, it's really I mean not much of an issue as far as no half stop for it so it has a pretty long pull for it before it wants to close down on itself um, so if you're cutting it should be going that way anyway uh, so it shouldn't really have much of an issue for that but i thought that was pretty interesting where you can actually take it all the way to the edge of the material still cut on it oh yes i am definitely the one to try and find places to eat i think i was in saint saint louis where's the place with the arch i think that's saint louis uh saint louis and a google search as far as a good barbecue place and then uh, leather sheath. 
I've been having trying to have people guess on what that is. Uh, but I, I went there, and then uh, the place that I Google searched was not in the best area, where I was kind of like checking out the window every now and then to see if the car was still there. Uh, but food wasn't bad. My food wasn't great. My wife's food was better. So this is one that I, I keep around uh, just because I like it. Uh, so um, any more guesses on what this is? It is a fox knife. <laughs> you have no idea. It's all right. Sorry, right, Jody. Uh, but this is a fox knife. Uh, this is a the uh, drag attack. Uh, this is a um, Bostonelli uh, collaboration. Uh, so this is one uh, that I've learned how to operate one hand. Uh, so it's really, uh, really uh, very nice. Uh, I would recommend it over the now plastic scale one. Yeah, it's it's a gorgeous knife. I just I just keep it around. Uh, so now this one is a friction folder. Uh, they actually do advertise as being able to use it as a personal defense. So if you actually do have it in closed position, it is a, a contact point for that. As far as pressure, uh, it is a friction folder, uh, but yeah, one-handed. And then steel-wise, I don't remember what this one is. I do not remember. I don't see any markings on it. But if you like it, um, I like it, and that's why I'm keeping it around. So it stays pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that would hurt. Um, so yeah, if you even in the closed position, I mean, if you're going to be uh, pressure pointing, um, they're popping through um, cardboard or something with it. Uh, where's my cardboard? I don't know what I was hitting with this, but. Yeah, later, Zach. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, but that's how that one is. Very beautiful. I would recommend the wood version if you're going to get one of these for the Drago Tack. I got mine off Amazon. It was on sale. But it stays in here. I bring it out, look at it every now and then, and put it back. Uh, I don't really carry it with me very much. Yeah, yeah it very well could be. Uh, this is one of the new QSPs. Uh, this is the worker. Uh, this is done of a designer's Arthur. Um, I forgot his last name now, uh, but he does did this one and also the neck muck. Uh, this is actually on bearings. Uh, so uh, it has the G10 uh, carbon fiber. Yep, QSP as well. Uh, this one's in D2, uh, but then they're actually going to be in. Uh, N690. So N690 is actually what it's going to be in uh, for the, the main design or the, the actual production version. And then it also is going to have a deep carry clip. I took the clip off on this one, uh, but it will have a deep carry clip for it. And then that's going to be how that is. So lock back design uh, on bearings uh, for that one. It does have the sheath. The sheath is pretty loose. So it's really not too necessary for it. And I don't know if that's going to be part of the, the actual main production version. And if also, if you guys want to see QSP and uh, dealers, uh, then contact them. Uh, so reach out and see if we can actually get them to be sold anywhere else. Right now, White Mountain Knives is the main retailer. And then uh, you can go out of, out of country for it uh, for MesserDepot.de. Uh, they do the sales as well. And they do ship now worldwide, but it takes about two weeks uh, for Messer Depot. And then, um, yeah, you have White Mountain Knives as well. But that's that one there. What else have we got? Yeah, some, yeah, what was it? Camillus, Camillus. This is actually a pretty nice knife. Now, this is an OS 8. It has a really interesting release. That's really comfortable. Very chunky knife. But... Comfy in hand. Uh, still, I mean, they're bought out. They're not the real, the main company anymore. Uh, but that's a Camelus, Camelus, Camelus. Yeah. And then they have this one too. This is the. Whoop. Yeah, come on now. I think this is a Prestige. 
So that's kind of a little interesting backspacer for it. This was some design for it. Uh, there's a VG10 blade, uh, also very inexpensive for that one. And then for the blind knife reviews, do you guys want to see that come back? Because it seemed like it was somewhat interesting to folks. It was interesting for us. It was actually fun. Uh, but I don't know if it really gained a lot of traction for it as far as blind knife reviews. Um, because people were like, this is silly. Why are you doing that? Well, because it's fun. Uh, but that's where it, was, it didn't really gain a lot of traction with non, the not reviewer, the people that aren't reviewing stuff. Because people that are reviewing stuff had fun with it. It was kind of new, exciting to try and do a review um, without being able to see anything. Uh, but yeah, VG10. And I think this I bought for like 30 bucks or something or 20, 40 bucks. It was really stiff though when I first got it. So I did have to break it in by moving around, lubricating it and everything else. There you go, all the good reviews on it. So hopefully we can get it back because um, if anybody also is still in contact with um, uh, Tyler, I think it's Tyler at Valtech. I uh, do apologize for that. Um, I think I, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was in line for the next one and it kind of went longer. And then like, then I, I messaged him on Instagram and he doesn't reply to me anymore. doesn't look at my stuff. Cause I think I, I burnt the bridge there cause it took a little bit longer and it didn't really go um, for number three. It didn't really go how it needed to. So if you're still in contact with him, do apologize for that. It wasn't intentional to not have that go through it just kind of didn't work out and i think that was right when also the pass around group was like blowing up where we were getting like backlogged and everything uh, so that kind of fell through yeah if you could at least just apologize for it even if he doesn't uh, become in communication again uh, and he just like doesn't like me anymore that's fine i mean it, well it's not fine but it happens uh, so i did not mean to have that happen And I can still keep this knife around. Like this is, um, this is gonna might make a lot of people upset. But if you're in at one hour and thirty seven minutes, uh, then uh, this is something that um, I had. This is when I first started the YouTube channel, and this is where Gearbest was still around. Uh, but uh, this is definitely um, a knockoff of the the ArcLight uh, Slimfoot. Uh, but if Fura could actually like give us proper steel and their own designs, that would be a pretty good player. Um, but this is one that I keep around because I like it, uh, but I don't show it very often because then I would get like brimstone and hellfire for showing a, a counterfeit knife or a knockoff. Uh, Cause it really is. I mean, it's a, the style of it is, is definitely an arc light uh, slim foot. Uh, for it, but the action on it is just nice. Um, it's a mixture with the blade weight as well as what they're doing and only has two two um, things. So pivot, back screw, knife comes apart. So Fura, if they ever come around again, if they just did the proper steel, when they said D2, give us D2, whatever steel it is, give us that steel and then actually have their own design, then that would be fantastic. They would actually be a player in the market. And this I found I don't like very often, very much. Uh, this is my first GEC. Uh, this is the Farming Tool, uh, bull, the Bullnose 71. Just the spring's too strong on it. So I don't know how you, like, I tried this to, to like flex the spring a little bit to get it a little bit looser. But this is a, the green uh, micarta uh, for this one. Uh, but yeah, just the spring is just it's too strong on it. Oh, yeah, this definitely walk and talk, but yeah. So that's one thing that I don't really like about that. Um, anybody also have any experience with um, you know, what brand was that? I have a brand that I was looking at. What brand? What brand? Point it up here. It was from Queen Cutlery. So Queen Cutlery shut down. That from what I know about them. Uh, but uh, there's one that's called. Um, 
Scott and Morgan. So this brand and that knife, which I think it's a pretty knife. So I don't know if anybody had any experience with this company, but I heard that um, their QC as far as Queen Cutlery is kind of shoddy or like hit and miss. So I don't know if this knife is going to be the same way, but I saw this on the secondary market. Yeah, that's what I was saying, the hit and miss as far as quality goes. So hopefully it's not an issue with that one, because I think it's a pretty knife. I mean, as far as that, um, I'm not really too into the uh, traditionals. I'm learning a little bit, but I don't know what um, what model that would be, like if in, in GEC, uh, what frame size that would be or what number. Yeah, but we'll see on that one as far as picking that one up and if that one works out to be very good custom knife makers on a friend of my clones he said that it's because he knows that people can't afford oh which knife maker is that because that's kind of a high road for that to actually not be offended by it because some people are like deathly offended by it like where we're like like in showing the knife i may have like had something show at my door with like you know, with a fire stick or something yeah so i mean it's interesting if some of the knife makers don't have issue with it because it is you know, kind of stealing their intellectual property uh, so i understand it a whole lot uh, i'm not to the point at where i'm spending a lot of money on knives now uh, so so for some of the custom ones that are coming at like twelve hundred dollars is like ah, i am not gonna buy that uh so i mean this is 550 and this is something that i didn't buy this is something that was the gift uh, but oh it's cutting out on me I think I lost everybody. Let me know in the comments if you're still there. Because it froze on my end. But it's 1 hour and 42 minutes. So I guess that's a lot of talking so far. Oh, still there. I'm not here. Uh, at least on my screen. Like it stopped with, like in this motion right here. Oh, there we go. Uh-uh. It's moving again. I think it's moving. Uh-uh. Oh, it's still there. Yeah, it totally froze on my side. I was like, uh oh, I lost everybody. Um, but there we go. Okay. So we're back. Um, yeah, Gerber's, like, I want Gerber's to, to do well. Like, this is a Gerber, uh, the 39 series that I have. Uh, this is kind of a an odd one because I think I have, like, a faulty one um, because this is a backlock that does this. So I think something went wrong there in my, but it, it's to my benefit, um, but oh, so I'm keeping this around because I, I went and picked up the nickel plated one because I was like, I, I love this one so much that I bought the nickel plated one, but the nickel plated one had like a bubble under nickel plating and then it wasn't working the same way. Yeah, I mean, no, hopefully it works pretty well. Because I think Bear, the Bear Girls line kind of kind of damaged um, Gerber's reputation more than helping it. Um, but but that's kind of my opinion on that more so. So I don't know if people share that opinion or not. Uh, but I mean that's the Gerber that I have, and then I also have um, the Pocket Square. But the Pocket Square I went through two knives to get a good knife. Uh, so that's kind of where I have for QC issues. Uh, if anybody wants like also a, a non-automatic knife that acts like an automatic knife, um, the CRKT, this thing like this thing fires like crazy. This is like the what is it? 
a crack shot. So a torsion bar type of assist system. Uh, so that's where it starts to push down on that spring. But this thing like, oh, it fires nicely uh, for this one. Yeah, the fastball is pretty cool. So hopefully, it seems like they're, at least from, again, Nick's video, uh, that their next line uh, should be really good. Yeah, you have a good one. Uh, this one I really like. Also, Nemesis knives. Now, if you guys haven't checked out Nemesis, um, this cuts fantastic. This is a VG10 on this one as well, uh, but um, it does really well. So, I keep this one around. Uh, Nemesis also sold through White Mountain. Uh, so, White Mountain actually has some pretty good uh, things that they set up. Yeah, I saw that for the drop as far as um, the now fastball. So, I was considering it uh, to pick that one up there. Yeah, because it's 85 is I think is the best price um, overall that I've seen. What else do we have? I still like this Terra. I still have my um, quick stud on it that I added. It actually went in and actually um, cut it in a little bit, so it actually is, um, it's not flush on top, so it actually rode um, higher before and actually ground it in, so it's actually um, kind of at the end of the ramp. Good okay, night, folks. I'm going to end this probably pretty soon, too, so unless there's something pressing. If you guys have any questions, let me know as well. Uh, so it's a long time to probably talk, and so that's where... Uh, we'll kind of go through things and best of luck to everybody that's actually viewers on here as well uh, Hopefully things work out and then we still have again 2,000 subscriber giveaway if I get there or when I get there I will have the giveaway for that uh, Charitable giveaway uh, August 9th is the end for that one. Uh, so give me some time after that happens So August 9th is the end and I'll get everything set up and then we'll do the draw on that uh, for that giveaway uh, for uh, the charitable one for all the drop knives. But yep, those are all the different ones. What else we got? Yeah, this one's not, not too impressed with either. The slinger is actually what I bought to actually get the free knife. Oh, it, it looks good. I mean, with the gold and blue, but again, it's really sharp on this bar to the frame lock to release it. Cool, cool. All right, guys. If nothing else, we're probably going to end it out as well, um, just for fun. Uh, let's just have. Uh, what else have we got? Yeah, that's going to be about it. Uh, but uh, anything else? Anybody have questions? Anybody else on? Seven people still here. Um, also, if anybody has any questions, comments, um, if you're watching after the fact, uh, do let me know. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the comment there. Uh, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We have bits. We still use those. I have some craftsman bits too that I actually like. Um, better, even though they're kind of out of business now. Uh, great night. Yep. Yep. So let's go. Yep. And then if you made it this far, and just leave Bladester in the comments, and see if you actually um, people on the after side actually watched all the way through, which would be kind of interesting because it's a long time to put into uh, your day. Because right now it's an hour and 49 minutes 
uh, which is kind of crazy. I was going to actually make this a short video, but it kind of worked out talking with folks, people asking questions, showing off stuff. Uh, so that's kind of how it goes. Uh, but if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe so we can get to the 2000 mark and um, go from there as far as where the channel is going to go, uh, provide any feedback as well and anything else. appreciate it yeah but yeah let any comments know and then um very good community so people are out to help um if you, you have questions if anybody else wants to start up channels um do that share the information it does it's uh, not always uh, cupcakes and rainbows but it is something that is interesting if you actually want to do it um so i mean again i'm still running off an old phone and nothing fantastic so this is the type of phone that i'm using to actually record all the videos are done that way uh, lighting is like eighteen dollars and then table and everything else so tripod that's what i'm using now so thank you very much let me know we'll give it a little bit more probably make it to about another 45 seconds or so and then we'll see if anybody else has any other comments questions concerns uh let me know comment wise as far as there's anything else and then we'll, I'll try and get cut up also on the other reviews. Yeah, my lighting is pretty inexpensive. Actually, you know, I'll lift you up here. Oop. So I basically just shoot it at the wall. Then I have that one shooting at the ceiling. And these, I mean, those are like, I think they're like six, $7 or $8. I got it from Walmart. It worked pretty well. At least I hope it does. Uh, so that's what I've been using recently uh, for lighting um, and then just um, LED lighting that I've been using for it. Uh, so nothing expensive. I didn't buy any um, expensive lighting setups with shadow boxes and all those other things. Um, that's just what I'm using for that. So, I mean, figure out what works. You don't need to have a lot of money to put into it uh, as far as what you want to invest. Um, that's just what I'm using uh, for what I have. Cool, cool. Sweet stuff. All right. Have a great time. It's been good hanging out with everybody. Um, if you have anybody else that is not subscribed, subscribe on. Leave comments, feedback. It's always good to talk to two people instead of talking to myself because I am really talking to myself with comments and everything else. Uh, but thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Have a great night, morning, weekend, week, whatever it is. Have a great time.